Hello, Dr. Dolly. Thank you for hosting this great podcast. I wanted to ask your thoughts on preferred stocks. You recently had Rick Ferry on your show. He mentioned during the podcast that he had around 20% of his portfolio in preferred stock funds as a means of fixed income. I realized that preferred stocks hold similar risks to common stocks, so I was surprised that he was holding a fairly significant percentage as what he considered quote-unquote fixed income. With bond yields offering little return, what are your thoughts on holding these funds as an alternative source of yield? I'm currently 10 to 15 years from my projected retirement and have been gradually increasing the bond holdings in my portfolio to hedge risk, but I'm concerned that they will not generate enough income to get the returns I need. Thanks for your time and expertise. All right. So Rick's ask, or Tim is asking about preferred stocks. Rick Ferry was on a few podcast episodes ago. He mentioned that 20% of his fixed income, not his entire portfolio, is in preferred stocks. He used to work uh, with those a lot when he was in the industry. So he feels really comfortable with them and, uh, and invest in them. I don't invest in preferred stocks. Um, like uh, Rick also invests in junk bonds. I don't invest in junk bonds. All of these involve some equity risk. In fact, just a corporate bond involves some equity risk. That's partly why it pays more than a treasury bond. And a junk bond pays a little bit more and preferred um, stocks uh, and convertible bonds pay a little bit more. But basically, you're just taking a little bit more equity risk in your fixed income. So when you take more risk, you expect higher returns. Now, in this time of low interest rates, when bonds are paying pathetically low rates, you can see why people are tempted to reach for yield, to go for anything that offers a little bit higher uh, yield than what you're getting out of a bond. And so I, I can understand why people would be interested in that sort of stuff. If you feel like the risk you're taking on, you're being adequately compensated for, uh, then I think that's a reasonable thing to do in a diversified portfolio like we're talking about here. The, what are the downsides? Well, some people say it's the worst of both worlds, right? You've got more risk of total loss, like when you're a stock investor, and you've still got a cap on your earnings, like when you're a bond investor. So a lot of people think preferred stocks or convertible bonds are kind of the worst of both worlds. Um, you know, there are a few mutual funds or ETFs out there that invest in these things that can help you diversify them. Um, they're not the most tax efficient things in the world. And so keep that in mind. It may be something if you're going to invest in it, you want to keep it in a retirement account. Um, but I don't invest in them. I kind of like the uh, Larry Swedrow approach to bonds. He basically advocates that you should take your risk mostly on the equity side. So my bond holdings include the federal TSP G fund, which is basically a money market fund on steroids, uh, a TIPS fund or ETF uh, that invests in treasuries, treasury inflation protected securities, and a high quality municipal bond fund for those bonds that I hold in uh, my taxable account. That's in the Vanguard Intermediate uh, Muni bond fund. And those are my fixed income holdings. I figure if I'm going to take risk on the fixed income side, I might as well go big. So the only thing that's close to that is in my real estate uh, section of my portfolio. I have 5% of my real estate portfolio, uh, 5% of my total portfolio, which is 25% of my real estate portfolio that is invested in um, basically real estate debt. So these are first lien loans. These are private funds that invest in first lien loans to developers. So a developer comes in, takes a loan, a private loan, a hard money loan, whatever you want to call it, uh, from the fund and probably pays something like 10, 12% plus a couple of points for a six to 15 month loan. And of course the fund gets their cut and pays their expenses and, uh, and I get what's left, what's left. And so these funds tend to have returns of six to 12%. Um, and so I figure if you're going to really reach for yield, you might as well reach for a little bit more than you're going to get out of a preferred stock fund. Um, I prefer these real estate debt funds for that section of my portfolio. But remember, those are not risk-free. They're not treasuries by any means. And in a, a real estate downturn, a real estate debt fund becomes a real estate equity fund as they foreclose on these properties and have to finish up the development of them themselves. And so you better make sure if you're going to invest in one of these funds that it knows how to do that as well. Because in a really bad situation, which you'll eventually hit, it's going to become a real estate equity fund, not just a debt fund. If you want your questions answered by the White Coat Investor, record your question at whitecoatinvestor.com slash YQA or click the link in the description.